the hair. Under the sky, something shifts. A scoop of mud lifts, hops, becomes a scoop of mud again. His ears are too long for this flattening game, and he knows it. He is the space between the flat earth and the flat sky. He must box the clouds to keep it open. Before him there was nothing. After him there will be nothing again. Pure time. My awkward running youth. I've included a couple of poems and um, one of the themes that quietly seems to run through is uh, a sense of, um, I suppose, religious experience in, in some form. And more and more, it seems to be more pairing back to a form of listening, a form of being really able to listen. Uh, so it's two short poems. The first is called the ear shell. What is the sea but me really listening? Or is there another beyond the pacing ships? Flying fish off the starboard bow, little iron slivers of sea, or the boat wakes widening absence. Storm waves days ahead of the mother event. Island atoll crusting over the dead remains of its first hard fought. Inside its hut, inside its harbour mouth, the breakwater skull laps against itself. The sandworm, far out on the low tide flats, sun quiet on the left behind water. The more you dig, the more he digs, tail end disappearing. He will pass the whole beach through himself and back, and is only the bay. This next piece is, uh, is rather unusual. It was written very quickly, as, as most, many of my poems are, in one sitting. Um, but it's actually just a, sec a section of prose, uh, written in one paragraph. Some people may call it a prose poem. It's called The Island. I dream of crossing a wide ocean by a yacht. It is a small yacht. There is only myself. Weeks of nothing, then land sign ahead. What attraction for water bluer, seaweed, gannets, small owl on the mast. There is a cap of cloud building and I circumnavigate it warily. The island is surrounded by reefs, but an entrance is marked by white doves sitting on the water. Only passable at high tide, I sail between the white doves into a calm blue lagoon. It appears idyllic, and I make ready to drop anchor. 
Squinting through binoculars, I see there is a welcoming committee on a jetty. They are smiling and holding their arms out, but all the eyes are turned away. One blinks back a tear, and I see he is afraid I've noticed. Behind, a man with a stick snarls at them to smile harder. I train the binoculars down and left. Almost hidden, a forest of broken hulls and masts. I have heard of this place. This is the island of the old God. As I turn to sail away, the man starts to beat his captives with a stick. White doves fly off, camp of cloud, small owl on the mast, gannets, seaweed, the deep green comforting sea. This next poem, a uh, short poem, is a poem of, poem of mourning, written after uh, my dear Uncle Henry died. He died uh, late autumn, so this was written late autumn, early winter. And it's called The Wasps. The wasps are coming in to die. Alone, or in little groups, their hard bodies ponder the glass, slow as Pythagoras working his theorem. Each waste a drawn snare, for I know I will find you, curled in some corner, pit burial of a sink, perfect comma to punctuate my morning. And to finish off, I thought I would just read uh, a short Antarctic poem. Oddly, you, you read the first line, so that's helped. Um, just, just to give a flavour. Uh, it's called Antarctic Winter. Uh, and I think it's difficult to appreciate, you know, if you come from temperate climes, the almost apocalyptic event of, you know, moving into a full polar winter. Each morning's bruised rim is painful to touch. Sky-stretched evenings colour beautifully to blood. Daylight shrunk to the moon's unfathomable clock. Brittle noises in the wind gapped dark. Brilliant sunsets are gone. The world fluid has drained out and left us, unprepared for this capillary cold. I think of those bronze statues left out to the great Russian winter. Lead anchored movement vital organs hoarded away. Cold cataracts, the glazed eye, the sea has snapped shut. Thank you.